Genesis chapter 26. Genesis chapter 26, verse 18. And Isaac digged again the wells of water which they had digged in the days of Abraham his father. For the Philistines had stopped them after the death of Abraham. And he called their names after the names by which his father had called them. Would you pray? Father God, you're great and awesome and we love you. Thank you, God, that you know every need. And God, I love you. Your presence is in the house tonight. I pray, oh God, that your word would go forth with power. And Lord, that we would dig it in. Lord, that we would dig just a little bit deeper. Lord, to find what you are wanting to give us. Lord, that we would not hesitate. Lord, that we would dig in and receive from you tonight, God. Lord, that your name would be glorified. Your people be strengthened. And God, I need your anointing right now. Touch and move for your glory. Amen. And Isaac digged again the wells of water, which had, dig, had been digged in the days of his father Abraham. We've got to dig out some old wells. Amen. 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 Does anybody know what I'm talking about? You remember whenever a point in your life where it seemed like there was just an overflow in the spirit. Start thinking about that. I mean an overflow. That it didn't matter who was around you. I mean there, the river was just flowing. The water was flowing. You had an overflow. But somewhere down the line, the enemy has come and he has poured trash in your well. Amen.
and I'll draw nigh to you. Amen. There's some things that we've got to do. Abraham was 75 years old when he left his hometown and headed in the direction that God was leading him. May I tell you, you never get too old to start walking with God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He's wanting to take us somewhere. God began to move in his life. Amen. He told uh, Abraham that not only, listen to this, in Genesis 12, 1 through 3, now the Lord had said unto Abram, get thee out of thy country and from thy kindred and from thy father's house into a land that I will show thee. And I will make thee a great nation and I will bless thee and make thy name great and thou shalt be a blessing. He said, not only am I going to bless you, but thou shalt be a blessing. Yes. Hallelujah. Woo. Woo. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm telling you, yeah. when God blesses you so good, until you are overflowing and you're blessing people around you, and that's what he said I'm going to do to you, and I will bless them that bless thee and curse him that curseth thee, and in thee shall all the families of the earth be blessed. You're such a blessing. You know what that means? That means the blessings of God are upon your life. That means that you're blessed so good that your blessings are going out to somebody else. Amen? I mean, you can't help it because there's an overflow. It's spilling out. It's pouring out. And God is wanting to do that in our life. He's wanting to take us into that place, but we've got to dig. We've got to dig. We've got to dig. It's not easy to dig. When I started transplanting some flowers this summer, I guarantee you it was hot. And it was hard work. But I moved them, and they live, and they're multiplying. That's the reason I had to dig them up and move them. They had multiplied so much, there wasn't room for them. They had to be spread out. What was in a place like this? Spread all the way across the field. Because the blessing God had blessed him. God had made a covenant with him. You see, Abraham had a personal relationship with God before the law. I'm going to do a little teaching right now. He believed God in Romans 4 and 3. It said, Abraham believed God and it was counted unto him for righteousness. Galatians teaches us that the reason the law was given in Galatians 3 and 19 because of the transgression until the seed should come to whom the promise was made. You see, the law was brought to reveal sin not to secure righteousness. It was a temporary measure introduced to convince people and convict people and show them that they had a need to be justified and that they were they did not have the ability to save themselves. So actually what the law was trying to do was get them to realize that they needed a savior. So that when Jesus came on the scene, that they would know I can't do it myself. Jesus when he came on the scene. Amen. And so instead of it being a blessing, it became a hindrance. The law demanded righteousness, but it didn't have the power to provide. Mm, mm. It was trying to prepare them for the gospel. Amen. Amen. Ooh, I'm 
telling you, there's not a one of us in this house tonight that can save ourselves. There's not a one of us here that are good enough. There's not a one of us here tonight that can walk on streets of gold because of our own righteousness. It is because of the love and the grace of the Holy God that sent us the Savior and His name was called Jesus. God grace for you to say and not of yourself that you should you know, start boasting
Start telling why you can. Why you can. Amen. So Isaiah 12 and 3 says, Therefore with joy shall you draw waters out of the wells of salvation. You got saved? And I'm telling you how many were, were joyful when you got saved. You felt that load lift off of you. So Isaac, he digged another well in verse 21. And they strove for it also. And he called the name of it Satan, which means opposition, accusation. Mm. I'm telling you, you are going to have some opposition. You might as well mark it down in your little book, okay? The first well of salvation, springing up, springing up. It's like you don't have to do nothing. It just springs up. And then the devil comes along and says, you can't have that. Who do you think you are? Well, you go a little deeper. You go a little farther. You dig again. Man, the water is flowing again. What does he say? He opposes you. He starts opposing you. He starts coming against you. And there's people in this very house today that the enemy has come against you this very week. He's trying to tell you that you can't have the blessings of God. He's trying to tell you that you can't be everything that God says you can be. Well, I've come by to tell you tonight, you are what God says you are. You need a prayer. some junk been put in our way. We might have had to dig out some stuff. And the enemy said, well, because you got stuff in your well, because you, you got all this junk in your well, you're nobody. You'll never account, amount to anything. Who do you think you are? Just start digging again. Dig it out. Dig it out. Dig it out. Because I'm telling you, the same blood of Jesus Christ is still sufficient from the day I said Jesus come into my heart until I walk through the pearly gate. I guarantee you that blood is not going to lose one drop of power. Going into open sin constantly saying, well, God will, do, God will take care of this, so I'm going to do it. I'm going to ask Him before I do it. God, forgive me for saying that. Forgive me for what I'm about to do. Uh-uh. I don't work. I don't work. Ain't no enemy filling up your well. You do it. Amen. They dig another well. Opposition. Accusation. In fact, the, the Bible teaches us that Satan is the accuser of the brethren. You don't have, have to have done anything for him to tell you how low down and no count you are. Or even to have someone else come along and tell you how no count uh, you are. Come on. Amen. Verse 22, And he removed from thence and digged another well. I want you to notice he didn't stop digging. And he did not stop finding wells. He did not stop finding water. Amen. He kept finding and wells. And every time he got here, get paid dirty, you might as well say. He got water. Verse 22. And he removed from this and digged another well. And from for that, they stole not. There's going to come a time when the devil's going to find out they mean business. And he called the name of it. And he said, For now the Lord hath made room for us, and we shall be fruitful in the land. There comes a time. Now, you know, the things that the devil tried on me when I first got saved, he don't try them anymore. Anybody know what I'm talking about? But he's got other stuff. 
But there comes a time when he says, well, you know, they're going to make it. I can hinder them, but I can't stop them. I can hinder them, but I can't stop them. Yeah. God's made room for us. Yeah. And we are fruitful in the land. When we went to Israel, and we, we topped an area there where down below us was the Valley of Megiddo. The place, I'm telling you, I can't express how I felt, how any of us felt as we looked out that bus and we seen that battle that where one day the great battle will be fought. Amen. Where blood will, will flow to the horse's bridle. But in that valley, as we looked, I mean, the ground looked in places just looked barren. But anywhere they put water, you talking about some fruit. You talking about, it was huge. It was lush. It was beautiful. It was green. It was just, it was just everywhere you look was this just magnificent fruit in this valley where it had been a desert. But when the water got on it, it became fruitful. May I tell you, you may have been in a bad place. You may Once again, then had allowed the devil to begin. 
begin to fill up their, their wells. And, and it seemed like once again people were going through a form of religiosity and, and just getting by with uh, just anything that come along. Uh, but then there came a day when people said, uh, I believe I, I believe the word. There's more, there's more, there's more, there's more. And they separated themselves unto the Lord. And they began to dig out all this junk. And the next thing you know, they received the Holy Ghost. Had to search the pages of the Bible to find out what they had received. Found out, hey, it's the real deal. Amen. And it's been like that all through history. And I had heard about the revivals of the past. I'd heard about the move of God. I'd heard some of the old saints say things like this when I came to myself. Yeah. And I'd always been taught, well, you know, you got to let the Lord have His way, but you're in control. You, you know what's going on, and that's it. You know, you just. But I kept hearing testimonies of the old saints when I came to myself. And I started praying. God, I want something I've never had before. I want something that I've heard about, but I've never experienced. And I said, God, here I am. You take control. Buddy, you better watch what you say. Yeah. You better watch what you say because you ought to get what you pray for. Yeah. Amen. We heard about a revival in Florida. We were in South Carolina in revival. When we closed out revival that Friday night, we headed to Florida that night after church. We got there. When we got there, people were laying on the curb. They had they had come to the place they wouldn't let them on the property until seven o'clock in the morning, and so they had slept on the curb all night long because they was hungry. Yeah. We went by there to find out where the church was. But before we went to our motel, we decided they wasn't gonna need us going to the motel. We got to get in line. We got in line. Thirteen hours later, we got into church. Man, we sat close to the front. I wanted to be on the main floor. And they headed to the back. Guess what? He was in the balcony. Yeah. And I thought, the door and I were up there, we as tired as dogs. <laughs> and they started singing. And they brought out those flags. Started singing about revival. I like to fell out. It was so wonderful. Finally, he had preached, and they pulled back all the chairs, and people started coming for salvation. And then they said, anybody that had never been here before, Come on up. Here we went. <laughs> of course, I wanted the evangelist to pray for him. He headed toward me. And then he turned. <laughs> well, there's Brother Kilpatrick. I wanted the pastor to pray for me. Here I go. Here he comes. And he turns. <laughs> well, I get prayer. But I was like, hmm. <laughs> Well, we started stepping over bodies, <laughs> heading back to the balcony. And when I started up the stairs, I felt like I started 
waiting in deep water, treading deep water. Until oh. I couldn't hardly lift one foot up. <laughs> Woo, my. Yes, Lord. And I said something about it. Someone over there said, what would you say? I said, it feels like deep water. She said, we've been praying that the river would rise up. And the wind hit the house. It wasn't coming out of the air conditioner. We felt the wind blow. Man. Mm. One night, the power of God hit that house, but I'd already turned the service over to the pastor. And this is when you know it's revival. And you know, people think it's over, but. You might, you know, it might be good to hang around sometimes. Because sometimes he serves dessert. <laughs> but he served dessert that night. And some already went home. And then there was just a, a holy hush come down on my house. It was like you just, you didn't dare to move. And, and I had my eyes closed. I couldn't open my eyes. It's like, oh, it's just so holy. It's just, oh, I can't explain it. And all of a sudden, someone starts speaking in tongues. And then you hear it, and, and it's moving. And I, I, was, I was sitting uh, over on this side. And, uh, and, and the, whoever was speaking in tongues over here, when they got through, they were over here. And oh, it was just something. It was so powerful I couldn't stand it. I, I thought I gotta go to the altar. Well, I got to the altar, I couldn't I couldn't stand just to be knelt at the altar. I had to just lay at the altar, you know. It was just and then, and then there was another message in tongues and the power of God hit it. And, and 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 so I I finally got up and I wasn't here anymore, I was over here. And this person had crawled over and she was over here. And I don't know how the pastor's wife got behind me because she was over there and now she's over here. And so they're, they're praying and, and, and the prayer, this woman prays for the pastor's wife. And, and then the Spirit of the Lord hits me and I, I start going, I'm shaking and I start going over to one side and, and I don't fall out and I, I can't raise up. And I'm, I, I'm, I'm crooked and I'm down and I can't go down but I can't get up. And, and Brother Doyle's still on the stage and I begin to shake it. And the woman now, she's like, oh my, she's, she's having a seizure. And I was saying, shaking so violently until they were like, you know, we better pray for her. And she put her hand on me and as, almost as instantly as she put her hand on me, she pulled it off and she told me later, she said, the Lord said, take your hand off. That's my But then for a period of time, we'd be in revival. They'd just be singing. I'd be, I couldn't even stand up. I'd be sitting there and shaking. It'd come time, the pastor would come time to, to get me to preach. And Brother Doyle had to come down and lead me up to the pulpit. Amen. Strange. But I never said, God, take it away. Yeah, that's it. I know people thought I was crazy. I know they thought something's wrong with her. She got a physical problem. What's wrong with her? But I'm telling you, the power of God was so strong. And you know what? I wouldn't mind if he'd do it again. I wouldn't mind if he'd do it again. And that happened for a long time. And then from that, so another type of manifestation. And from that manifestation, then another type. I mean, God is wanting to show Himself real and powerful and strong. But we have got to begin to dig ourselves. Dig out. Oh, oh, they're looking at me. They think this. Well, they don't think whatever they want to. If I can get in the presence of God, if I can be in the anointing of God, for the glory of God is so big. So big.
And I thought, oh God, before you come, are we going to have revival? And revival has come. And people have experienced the move of God. Why not here? Why not now? Why not us? <clears throat> We're going to have to dig out our well or it will not happen. When revival came to Brownsville, their agenda went out and went. All their programs went out and went. They had to stretch their cords. They had to make room for the hungry, the broken, the hurting, the lost. That they could come and drink from that same river. God is wanting us to dig out those wells. Would you stand? 